Elijah found himself in the desert. The desert is an arid place, a dry place, where we thirst for water, where we are found wanting. It is a place that symbolizes desperation. We have all been experiencing the desert here in Lake County with these recent fires. It seems like in our life when we go through one desert experience, another one awaits us. So many people in our own neighborhoods evacuated have been experiencing the desert. And just like Elijah, people in the desert find themselves throwing their hands up in the air, saying the same thing Elijah did. This is enough, O Lord. He says, in other words, I can't take this anymore. I've had enough of this desert. In fact, Elijah finds himself wishing for death. On Friday, as I visited the senior center across the street from Queen of the Rosary Church in Lucerne, the many people who have lost their homes in these recent fires where they're experiencing their own desert in the desperation of trying to get help. Our whole life, the Bible teaches us, is a journey. Another word for journey is a pilgrimage. We're all on a journey. And during this journey, we experience many tests. You have all experienced tests in your own life. The test of sickness, disease, addiction, problems with your children, divorce, betrayal, the test of natural disasters such as fires, personal disasters like losing your job, or losing a loved one. And just like Elijah, in the first reading for this Sunday, during these tests, we throw our hands up in the air. And the Lord sends his angel to comfort us. And in the desert, the angel points us, as the angel pointed Elijah, to the baked loaf. 
That same angel is here today pointing us to the baked loaf which God provides for us and the jar filled with water. Look, the angel says as he did to Elijah, God himself provides for you in the desert. And Elijah was fed in the desert by the hand of God. Look, don't just look, but taste and see how good God is to you in the desert. Forty days and forty nights, Elijah wandered in the desert until he reached the mountain. Represents our whole life, the journey. And on this journey, because God loves each and every one of us so very much, he provides for us not just any food, but his body and blood, his flesh and blood. Flesh and blood in Jewish culture represent the entirety of a person, the totality of a person. God himself provides in the journey and on the journey of the desert himself to sustain us, to nourish us. It's the very presence of God. Christ, who as we heard in the second reading, is the sacrificial offering for us that God in his great love for us gave to us his children continues to sacrifice himself for us at each and every mass so much does God love you and me that he continues to come down from heaven to nourish us to provide for us. We are unable to come to God because of our human limitations. That is why God comes to us. God comes to us and provides for us. Jesus continues to come down from heaven to feed us on this journey of the desert. I went to the seminary for a very long time so that I could learn a lot of wonderful theological concepts so that then I could tell you all of those wonderful theological concepts. And during my seminary experience, I had some wonderful professors in many of the theological classes that I took. And many of those classes dealt with the central action of our faith, the sacrifice of Mass, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Eucharist. But all of those classes combined did not teach me what one experience in a hospital room taught me 
about the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All of those classes in the seminary over the many years that I spent there did not teach me what one visit to a hospital room taught me about what Mass is. Jesus says in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. You who come to me will never hunger. I am the bread come down from heaven. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. It is the real body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus that we consume at Mass. It is not a symbol. It is God himself who through the power of the Holy Spirit enters the bread and the wine and becomes himself for us. Why? Because he loves you so very much and he knows that you need him in the desert because you go through so much with your problems all that you face on a daily basis all the people sitting around you don't know what you're going through but he does he knows how much you need him that's why he comes to you. I received a phone call after I was ordained a priest to go and baptize a three-month-old baby dying of cancer, a little boy. The mother called me to baptize him because the doctor said there was nothing more they could do. So I went to the hospital to baptize the baby. And through the hospital window that's in the door of every hospital room, I saw the mother breastfeeding her child. And she was singing to him. It's one of those images that from the many experiences that I am privileged to have as a priest that always stays with me, the mother holding her baby in her arms, her dying baby, dying from cancer. And she was singing to him, this is my body given for you. Just a couple weeks ago, I baptized a little girl in Hidden Valley. Weeks old. That just died last Sunday. 
Her lungs were not developed. And the mother too was holding the baby. And as she sang to him, I entered the room. And she says to me, Father, the doctors are telling me that there is nothing more for me to do. that they're giving him morphine, the cancer is spread all over his body. All there is to do is wait for him to die. But I am his mother, she says. I am his mother. And as long as I have him here with me, I will hold him, breastfeed him, and sing to him, because I am his mother. as she held her dying boy in her arms. That hospital room taught me more about Mass, the Eucharist, the body and blood of the Lord and Holy Communion, than all the seminary classes I ever took. The Bible teaches us that this is what God does with us. It says, come to my breasts. God who presents himself as the figure of a woman in the Hebrew scriptures, says, come to me and nourish yourself. Feed on me, says God, because you need this nourishment in the desert during this arduous journey. Isn't this what happens here? We who are slowly being eaten up, we are being eaten up by the cancer that we experience in this desert that we call life, your problems, your issues, your bills. your work, the people who murmur, gossip about you, who betray you, your sickness, your disease, the cancer of the fires, we all have cancer. in this journey. And God, because he loves us so very much, provides nourishment for us. Not just any nourishment, but provides himself. When a mother feeds her baby with her breasts, the milk, is so very powerful. We know this from medicine, that a mother who has AIDS or HIV has to take medicine in order to prevent her baby from 
receiving the same disease because the milk of the mother is just as powerful as blood and flesh. When the mother in that hospital room was giving her baby milk, she was giving her baby herself. She gave herself to her child. You are a child of God. And he himself comes down on this altar at each Mass and gives himself to you. So much are you loved. Elijah wasn't just invited to eat in the desert, the food that God provided for him. Elijah was commanded. God said, do this because Elijah needed it. The last words we hear at the consecration when the bread and the wine are changed into the body and blood of Jesus are. Do this. Do this. because you need it. You need it in this arduous, desert, arid journey we call life. So I ask you this morning, in your own desert experience, amidst your fears, your wants, your desires, your problems, what more do you want? What more do you need? If God himself is coming each time you are here to give himself to you. What more do you need? Taste and see how good your God is to you. Taste and see how much He loves you.